Hi there, my name is Steve Bronder, and in this talk, I'm going to be updating on the progress of the development of GPU support for STAN. This is joint work by STAN developers from the University of Ljubljana and Columbia University, and its beginnings go back to 2017. We first presented our work at STANCON 2018 Helsinki, and since then, we are trying to make a habit of updating the STAN community at every StanCon about our progress in the past year and new functionality available to users. Our goal has been and still is to make Stan inference faster and to do it in a seamless and cost-effective way. Our goal is to help users substantially reduce the time it takes for them to perform analysis or allow them to do analysis they couldn't afford to do before. We focus on GPUs because they're relatively low-cost hardware that most users already have installed in their workstations and laptops. We try to make this as simple as possible for users, where ideally the user only turns on the functionality and any, any available hardware is effectively utilized without further input from the user and without changes to stand code. The main focus of our work is on speeding up posterior and corresponding gradient computations through many core hardware and massively parallel hardware, such as GPUs. One of the earliest design choices was that we wanted to make this functionality accessible to as many users as possible, so it's based on OpenCL and not limited to just NVIDIA GPUs. For instance, Stan's OpenCL backend can target AMD GPUs as well as Intel CPUs and integrated GPUs. Though we haven't tried it yet, this work should also compile an OpenCL supported FPGAs. We are also aiming for our work to be extensible and simple to maintain. In particular, we wanna make it easy to add new functions, even for Stan developers that are not GPU programming experts. Stan's OpenCL framework and API are made for simplicity when communicating with GPUs and other heterogeneous computing devices. Abstractions allow for interacting with devices, creating and managing buffers, performing asynchronous computation, and compiling OpenCL code just in time. Algorithm developers mainly work with the matrix CL class, which represents data that has been sent over to the GPU. For C++ developers, this is similar to Eigen's matrix class and has support for a wide range of linear algebra operations. Stan's OpenCL backend is made to work easily with the Eigen library. Developers can easily pass an Eigen matrix to Stan's matrix CL class, perform computation on the GPU, then pass the matrix on the GPU back to an Eigen matrix. Below is an example where we pass two Eigen matrices to Stan's matrix CL class, perform a matrix multiplication, and take the sign of the result. Then we pass that back all the way to an Eigen matrix. There have been four new STAN releases since the last StanCon, and they include several additions that are relevant to parallel computation. The first three items on this list we'll discuss in more detail in this talk include kernel fusion, newly added OpenCL support for STAN math functions, and functions that will be particularly useful to STAN users, GLM likelihood primitives. Other notable additions include transpiler modifications that allow for identification and reduction of unnecessary data transfers. These include a simplified process for adding OpenCL support for existing stand functions. We have optimized matrix multiplication routines for cases where one dimension is much larger than the other. And finally, simplified makefile logic to turn parallel computations on and off. Simplifying the makefiles allows the user to turn on and off OpenCL support without rebuilding command stand. Note that GPU support can be used with command stand, command stand R, and command stand PI. The biggest addition since last year is without a doubt kernel fusion. To make posterior and gradient computation as fast as possible, ideally, every function Stan math should have a corresponding OpenCL function. But writing OpenCL algorithms requires different code than the standard C Stan math is written in. So there needs to be an equivalent OpenCL function for each basic function and operator inside of Stan math. For functions that are compositions of basic functions, we could just sequentially call their kernels which would be simple to implement, but would perform very poorly. Alternatively, we could handcraft a kernel for each composite function, which would be efficient, but would acquire a lot of development time from developers with GPU programming expertise. Automated kernel fusion aims at avoiding the time-consuming handcrafted approach by automatically combining basic kernels. This way we can eliminate many data transfers between the graphics processor and global memory. When using simple operations, Data transfers to and from the GPU can require more time than the actual computations. Fusing operations together results in significant speedups by reducing the number of data transfers and writing more efficient algorithms just in time. Launching a kernel also carries an overhead. By combining operations into fewer kernels, we're also reducing total overhead. 
In this example, you can see code for adding two matrices and multiplying the results with a scalar. For those of you familiar with the Eigen library, you'll see that this is very similar to Eigen's expression templating framework. The main goal is to delay, mm, excuse me, the main goal is to delay computation of expression, then before execution of the program will simplify the expression, making for much more performant code. We overlaid operators and other functions so that when given matrix CL objects, we do not calculate the result after each operation. Instead, they return an object that, rep that represents both the operation and references of arguments to the operation. We combine multiple operation objects into arbitrarily complex expressions. In the example on the slide, we have addition and multiplication operations. Below the code, you can see the types of the objects representing these two operations. The addition references the two input matrices as arguments, and element-wise multipl multiplication references the scalar and the addition object. Once the element-wise multiplication object is assigned to the resulting matrix, the kernel that combines these two operations is generated. Each, object, each operation object generates code for one operation, which is then combined into the kernel. The kernel is then compiled and executed. On this slide, it's generated kernel code from the previous example. Var1 is the scalar, and var2 and var3 are values from the input matrices. Var2 and var3 are first loaded from the global memory. The ifs around those are required to handle any triangular input matrices. Next, var4, the sum, is calculated. Var5 receives the result of the multiplication with the scalar, and on the final line, the result is written back to global memory. Kernel Fusion is a C++ developer-facing feature that simplifies adding GPU implementations of functions. We believe that GPU implementations for the majority of probability density, cumulative distribution, and other functions in stand math can be written using fused kernels. Three of the GLM likelihoods that we'll discuss in the next slide also use fused kernels. These three GLM specializations previously used handcrafted kernels. Replacing these handcrafted kernels with the kernel fusion techniques significantly simplified the code. For example, in the linear regression kernel, we replaced 180 lines of source code with 20 lines, and it didn't affect performance at all. Stand users will benefit greatly from kernel fusion through all of the functions that will have GPU implementations as a result. However, users don't have to concern themselves with kernel fusion. Whenever parallel implementations are available for some part of a model's computation, that section will seamlessly be executed in parallel via OpenCL instead of using only the serial CPU implementation. This is a list of functions that currently have OpenCL support. Most of these functions are not yet exposed in the stand modeling language, but most of them are, are available for use in kernel fusion to construct new composite functions. One of the functionalities that are exposed in the stand language that users can easily and substantially benefit from are the GLM likelihood functions. Each GLM function combines the underlying distribution in the linear term and includes an efficient implementation of the likelihood and gradient. Six such primitives are currently implemented, and they include the staples of statistical modeling, such as linear regression, logistic regression, and ordinal linear regression. The GLM primitives can be used as components of more complex models, such as rate realized regression and hierarchical models. Even if used without a GPU, the GLM specializations are several times faster than corresponding vanilla stand code, which separately computes the linear term, transformation, and likelihood. For the GPU, on top of that, we get further 10 to 20 times speed ups. <clears throat> Note that these new GLM functions for the GPU are only accessible when using the new compiler with command stand, command stand R, or command stand pi. Using the new compiler, it's easy to detect which arguments are for data and which ones are variables. This allows Stan to move data over to the GPU once instead of each time the GLM function is called. These are the results of experiments we did using logistic regression on a toy data set with 10 predictors and an increasing number of observations. The red and blue lines show the speed ups for two different GPUs compared to using only the CPU. We can see that we get 10 fold speed ups even with only 10 predictors and hundreds of thousands of observations. Using GPUs that are not specialized for computation, such as the AMD Radeon, are nice because they are relatively inexpensive. It's worth noting that these experiments were run using four cores and running four parallel chains, and that is to say we account for the advantage of multi-core CPUs. On this slide, we have the log times from the same experiment, but this time we include the results for one, two, and four chains. These results demonstrate how running two chains in parallel is less than two times slower than running only one chain. Similarly, 
running four chains in parallel is less than two times slower than running two chains in parallel. This is true for both when the GPU and CPU are used, as well as only the CPU is used. This behavior is not unexpected, but what is somewhat more surprising is that the CPU and GPU speed up versus CPU only is higher for four chains. This is very important as it shows that running multiple chains in parallel allows us to fully utilize all of the GPU hardware. This allows for maximum speed ups at smaller input sizes. This year, we mostly focus on setting up the infrastructure that will enable us to add GPU support for function gradients in a maintainable and fast way. This is the main reason that only a few GPU functions were exposed in the STAN language since the last StanCon. After the addition of the static matrices, we will start exposing GPU support for the typical bottlenecks in STAN. You can expect a number of new GPU support functions in the next releases. The other focuses for future releases include automatically selecting the most performant implementation, whether that is a CPU or OpenCL version, selecting the execution device at runtime instead of at compile time, and optimizations to enable efficient use of OpenCL on multi-core on multi CPUs, which now commonly come with eight or more cores. Automatically selecting the best device in a heterogeneous setting with a CPU and one or more GPUs is an interesting problem in itself. In particular, in the context of statistical inference, where we know that the same posterior and gradient will be evaluated one or more times in every iteration of sampling or optimization. And that is to say, we can assume that each part of a computation will be executed on data of the same dimension. This allows us to simultaneously sample and determine which device is best for each part of the computation so that the computation gets progressively more efficient during inference. And the same applies to tuning the implementations themselves. Because computational hardware such as GPUs defer an architecture so much, each GPU might have a different optimal way of subdividing the overall workload and distribute it among the GPU's computational units. And so we can increase the efficiency if we also tune these parameters during sampling. And because we encounter on multiple iterations of sampling or optimization, we can avoid the overhead of having to pre-tune performance before doing the actual inference. Since Mac OS Catalina, Apple has deprecated support for OpenCL to instead only allow its custom language called Metal. The community is currently looking into transpilers from OpenCL to Metal, and Stan GPU developers are keeping track of when a transpiler will be easily available for Stan users on Apple systems. A fun new fu feature currently in progress is the addition of more performant matrix types in Stan. The Stan language allows for assignments to subsets of a matrix. This limits the structures a stand can utilize for matrices since each cell of a matrix must be assignable. While this is very useful for stand users, this requires a trade-off between versatility of the language and performance. But if a user never assigns to a subset of a matrix in a stand program, the stand compiler can utilize a much more performant version of the matrix. The core idea here is to swap out the eigenmatrix of vars, which stores each value and adjoint next to each other, for a var of eigenmatrix types, which will store all values and adjoints of the matrix in two separate contiguous arrays. The intuition of why this structure is much more performant comes from how computers access data. The CPU accesses data from RAM by uploading one cache line at a time. Stan's auto diff type var holds pointers to an underlying implementation and the chain method for reverse mode, and then doubles for the value and adjoint. This structure is very good for scalar math, where we will need all of these elements close by. But when we do matrix algebra, we will frequently only access the values and adjoints of each var. The second cache line here shows that for adding the value of one var and the adjoint of another, we end up wasting a lot of cache. By instead keeping all the values and adjoints of the matrix in contiguous arrays, we can trade the cost of two additional pointers for much nicer cache access. In the below example for adding the values of one var and the adjoints of another, we can see that our cache lines are much more efficient. With the matrix auto diff class, we not only get the benefits of more compact storage, but instead of calling chain methods for each cell in a matrix during reverse mode of automatic differentiation, we only have to call the chain methods for the entire matrix. This project is still in development, but we are seeing magnitudes of speedups for gradient calculations when using these methods on CPUs. For GPUs, these speedups should be much larger. Here are some preliminary results of comparing gradient evaluations of multiplying two matrices and then performing a matrix addition. For even small matrices, we should see very nice speedups. 
And that's it for this year's update. If you're interested in the details, check out our paper and archive. If you have any questions or ideas, please don't hesitate to contact us. And we will hopefully see you next StanCon with another update in the progress of GPU support for Stan. Thanks for you for listening, and you know, thank you for your time.